Hey, I'm Barrett Nelson from On the Trail Creations in Fairbanks, Alaska. And today we're going to talk about fusible web and raw edge applique. So we're going to talk about um, several different types of fusible web and what's different about them and when you may want to use one or the other and how to use it and how to use it specifically for raw edge applique. It's something that I use in pretty much all of my kits. The um, Serenity and the Summer Dragonfly behind me both have um, raw edge applique on them and I I think probably almost all of mine, if not all of them, do. So it's something that I, I do a lot of, um, and it's very fun, and it's a very uh, quick and easy way to add appliques to just about anything. So well, let's get started. Okay, in case this is completely, completely new to you, Fusible Web is basically fabric glue that you iron between two layers of fabric. Um, most of the time it comes with a paper backing. So this is smooth on one side and it's glue on the other side. And I'm just going to peel this off so you can see maybe. So I'll move this so I can put it on the dark background. Eventually I'm going to peel all of them off so you can see what they look like. Um, but it's just fabric glue with the paper backing. So what you can do is trace your design onto the paper side. Um, I've already got one glued onto fabric here. I haven't, I didn't trace it in, in advance, but you can trace it in advance or draw it after or just cut freehand or whatever. Uh, and now the, it's, the fusible web has been ironed to the back of the fabric. And now the glue, so the glue has been transferred to the fabric and then when I peel the paper off, the glue will be on the fabric. So now I can take this and iron it onto a project. So that's how my little chickadee card gets done. The chickadee actually has four different pieces that get um, fused all together. So I'm actually going to do one of these for you so you can see how that, how that goes. But uh, if I had another project or if I wanted a little rust colored heart on this one, I could just iron that on and then add some stitching or whatever. So it's a super nifty tool um it also works for patching there's tons of other uses for it besides just applique um but i'm just going to talk about the difference between maybe i don't know five or six different types and um what makes them different and and how they're how they are better served for one purpose or another sometimes so Okay, next I'm going to just go over the types that I've got here, and this is not all of them. There are still more. Uh, this is just what I happen to have on hand, and it was pretty good variety, so I'm just going with it. Um, this one is Pellon Wonder Under. I have I buy that sometimes 10 bolts at a time, so I don't have the packaging, normal packaging for that. Um, but it's a fairly lightweight um, fusible web, Pellon Wonder Under. And it is paper backed, so that's what I use in my kits right now. Um, it's pretty lightweight. It doesn't really t usually gum up the needle or anything like that. Um, then these two are both Heat and Bond brand. Uh, this one is light, and this one is Ultra Hold. I'm not sure if there's some in between, uh, like a normal weight. I don't know. I, I don't use that one very often. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I was going to peel these off. So here's the... I already did a, I already did a wonder under, but we'll do it again. Maybe. Oh my goodness. There we go. All right. And eventually I should move these so I can, so you can see them better. Okay. So that's Pellon Wonder Under. Pretty thin, lightweight, <clears throat> and it does have the paper backing for you to trace. All right. The Heat and Bond both have paper backing also. This is the light. Oh my, I should have done this ahead of time, huh? <laughs> uh, it's almost there all right there we go so that one definitely looks a lot different and I'm going to start peeling the next one right now um, definitely a more solid sheet of glue so and then the ultra one is even is I think twice as thick as the light or something so um Definitely a lot more glue. This one advertises that you don't need to sew it at all. It holds really, really well without sewing. It doesn't handle sewing super great. It, it can gum up your needle 
Um, one trick to sewing with this is always make sure it's very cool. If it's still warm, it's gonna gum up your needle even more. So heat and bond ultra hold and heat and bond light. Um, those both I think are, are better for ones that are not gonna necessarily get sewn. This might be better, um, but this one for sure works great for sewing. This one is Misty Fuse, and this is uh, one of the few here that I have that does not have the paper backing on it. So it's much trickier to use, but it's also very, very lightweight. It's great for um, anything where you're going to maybe have multiple layers of um, pieces of fabric stacked on top of each other because it does add a little bit of stiffness. And the more of some of these other ones you add, the stiffer and firmer it's going to get. So this you can do multiple layers and it will still be really soft. Uh, and also you can still hand sew through it. So, but it is definitely trickier to use without the uh, paper backing. What you have to do is use uh, either parchment paper or a Teflon pressing sheet. Um, <clears throat> so, or you can put this directly between two layers of fabric, um, but then you have to either cut it exactly or cut it out after. So uh, there's definitely some trickier parts to using it. I'm sure there's lots of videos just on using this. I'm not going to go into huge detail, um, but you can take a pressing sheet like this and just lay this on there, put your fabric over it and iron that down and then let it cool. And when you peel this off, the misty fuse will be stuck to the fabric. So there's not a way to trace your design with this one, um, but you just, you do have to just attach it to the fabric and then cut it out from there. Um, but it's great lightweight one. All right, then this one is steam seam two. Um, <clears throat> there was a regular steam seam for a while, but I haven't seen it. It was the two it means it has two pieces of paper. At least I'm assuming that's what it means. And this comes in different weights also. There's a light version, but I don't have that one right now. This is just a normal one, but has paper on both sides. So the reason for that is one of the papers peels off more easily than the other one usually. You can still see through it to trace your design onto whichever side peels off not as easily. Um, the one that comes off easily, you just peel off. But the beauty of this one is it's already pretty tacky. So that's why it has the second layer of paper. So after I cut out my, uh, or trace my shape, not cut it out yet, but trace my shape, um, then I can stick it onto my fabric and I don't even have to iron it at this point. It's just going to stay there. You can iron it or, um, just stick it on and then cut out your shape, then peel off the other layer of paper and then go stick it on your project and you can remove it a time or two or, uh, or I don't know how many times, but, um, you, it's so you can kind of tack it on and it will stay in place until you're ready to iron. And then, um, then you can iron it and it will be permanent. So, uh, so it's tacky on both sides and that's why it has the paper on both sides. So let me peel this off though. So you can see what that looks like compared to the other ones. Um, this is again, not the lightweight one. This is the normal weight one and it is a pretty substantial amount of glue. So probably not super duper soft. Um, again, wonder under is the one that I've been using the most lately. So that's the one I'm the most familiar with, but I know that there's great uses for that one and it's very popular. So I'm going to move this out of the way so I can show you the last one, which is very different. It's actually a powder called bone ash powder. And this one just, it looks like salt. You just sprinkle it. Um, so again, you would want to use that with a pressing sheet. So I'm gonna just lay this here. I could put some fabric down and sprinkle this on and then fold this over, or I could have done it upside down, that works too. Uh, and then iron it down and let it cool. And then when you peel it off, the fusible will be um, attached to your fabric. The glue will be attached to your fabric and then you can cut out your shape and then go glue it again. So the glue can be reused several times. Every time you melt it with the iron, um, it gets reactivated. So as long as it's protected by either this or parchment paper, um, you can keep re-gluing re it. 
So that's pretty handy. So this, um, some advantages to this are you can control the amount that you use. If you really want just a tiny bit so that it does stay soft, then this might be a good um, option. Um, it's also, it can be good for if you forget. Um, like I definitely have been known to cut things out and then wish I would have put fusible web on it. Um, so then I can just lift up the corner and sprinkle a little bit under and brush off any excess. And I still always will use this over it because I don't want to get that glue on my iron. Although it will still happen and we'll talk about what to do about that. Um, so anyway, that's five or six different types and they're very different. Um, but they all have uses. So best for heavy duty things that you're not going to sew. The Ultra Heat and Bond. Um, lighter weight heat and bond, steam and steam two with the two layers of paper because it's sticky on both sides. It's sticking to my fingers. Um, and then wonder under pretty lightweight with the paper on one side, misty fuse, super lightweight, but with no paper. So they all have their place. Um, and next I'm going to show you how to use them in applique. All right, now I'm going to show you how I make my little chickadee cards. Um, mostly, uh, if you were actually using my pattern, the background would have two pieces of fabric. I'm just going to do one. I actually started this video a month ago. I'm kind of anxious to finish it. So I'm being lazy and I'm just using one piece of fabric for the background. Um, and then I have already traced my chickadee parts onto the paper side of the fusible web. It's the smooth side. Um, on a, a design that has a direction like words or if I want my chickadee to face a certain way I need to make sure I trace it in reverse because it goes on to the back side of the fabric so it's going to be facing the opposite direction um, so I've traced all my parts now I need to separate them according to what fabric they go on my chickadee body is gonna be the lightest color fabric I'm gonna put that on that one and then my wing I'll put on this one and then the head and the chin part can be the same, so they can stay next to each other because they're going on the same fabric. Um, super nifty trick that I learned from art quilter Robbie Eklo, and I almost always forget to actually do it, but it's great. At this point, just take a snip into each one of your pieces, and that will make them... All right, that's the body. So if my fabric had a right or wrong side, I would need to put it on the back on the wrong side. And I am going to use my uh, pressing sheet here that I can do two at once. Wow, somebody's stuck on here. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I really do know what I'm doing. All right, so it just takes a few seconds, maybe five seconds or so. And one more for the... I always use the pressing sheet just because it can leak out just a tiny bit around the edges. That's usually fine, but just in case, I want to protect my iron. But no matter how careful you are, you will probably get it on your iron eventually. There are products on the market um, that you can use to clean your iron, but what works really great is just a regular old dryer sheet. Um, if it hasn't been used yet, uh, I don't know if it matters actually, but if it hasn't, then you for sure want to put it on a washcloth or something because the fabric softener will come out of it and stain whatever you put it on. Um, I've actually never tried it on a pressing sheet. Maybe that would work. Um, and then just iron over it. Probably I will get something off of my iron. It's looking a little dark. So now I want to clean that off on something. But yeah, as you can see, that maybe you can't, but fabric softener coming out of there um, but that's a pretty quick way to clean the iron and then also it's a great way to clean your um, pressing sheet just take a dryer you don't have to use heat or anything just take a dryer sheet and it will wipe everything right off sometimes because a little bit will eventually get on here too so all right then we want to cut these out on the line And you don't want to use your really good fabric only scissors for this because you are cutting paper. 
So I have a pair that I use for everything. Get these cut out. My this pattern and lots more are available on my website. Okay. This is the wing. All right, so I've got all my parts here and I'm going to leave the paper on the body for now. So there's my body. Now, this is why I did that little snip because it makes it much easier to get started um, peeling the paper off. It's also much easier if it's all the way cool. If it's still warm, it's just really not going to want to come off. If you leave it for a few days, the paper will practically fall off. Um, but at first, it's hard to get off. So that little snip is just the greatest thing when I remember to do it. If you forget to do it, though, then you just need to grab a pin and scratch a line. Um, and that will do the same thing. Then you can... Oh, if it's pulling up the glue, which this is, then I'm going to zap it a little bit more. Okay, so maybe I didn't quite get it melted, which means I probably didn't on this one either, but maybe I'll try it. Find my little snip. Okay. Nope, that one just pulled the glue right off. So I guess that's all right. I can show you what happens. Um, I didn't melt it quite enough. So the glue stuck to the paper instead of to my fabric. So I'm gonna have to make that one again. Or I'll just cheat and use some that already has fusible on it. And trace that. But I am going to zap it again because it probably has the same problem. All right, while that's cooling, I guess I can cut it out. And there I forgot to snip it, so yeah, I usually do. All right, while those are cooling, um, I left the paper on here because after I get all my parts ready and ready to go, I can stick them all onto the body before I have to stick it onto my project. I can just make my little chickadee unit before I have to stick it onto, um, there we go. Now that's coming off okay. So, and the, the pressing sheet, you can kind of see through it. Um, so if you have a really involved pattern with lots and lots and lots of parts, then you can lay this over your pattern and you can see where to put things and you can build your applique like a bouquet of flowers or something and you can make it all right on here and let it cool and then peel it off and then stick it onto your project as as one unit so that can be a really great way to do more involved complicated ones all right so i've got my head sort of it's not great <laughs> all right this one that's right this one didn't have a starting point but the pin works great too okay so it's a little bit big i think i'll turn it i didn't do it very accurately put that down and a wing and the stuff's very staticky all right, now once I get them lined up, I'll deal with those fuzzies in a minute. I can just take it over here and press that. And now I have a little chickadee that's ready to have the paper peeled off there and add it to my project. If I had forgotten and peeled the paper off, then I could have just done it on here and just folded it over or used another one. Uh, wait for it to cool and then you can peel it off and that works also if you end up with things that don't match up exactly after they're put together then you can give it a little trim you trim some of those fuzzies off of there 
All right. So now my little chickadee is ready. Let's see, did I do the I did? Peel my paper off. him wherever I want. Normally I would have stitched a branch or something first, but this time I'm going to do it after. Um, and then I can just iron him in place. And then after that cools, it's ready for whatever stitching I want to do. I usually add the beak with um, black thread with free motion stitching, but you can also use a fabric marker. And then I use a black bead for the eye and a black pen or stitching for little tail feathers. Um, and then there's usually a branch underneath his feet. And then sometimes I'll make little feet with stitching, stitching or a pen. Um, all right. So that's just basically how you do raw edge applique. Um, the paper makes it so much easier. The paper backing when Stitch Witchery first came out, that was the first brand. It was more like Misty Fuse. It didn't have, it was like in the 1980s, it, it was more like this and it didn't have the paper backing. And uh, at one point when I was just learning how to sew, I volunteered to sew dorm sweatshirts for 24 girls, I think, in my dorm with teddy bears and balloons on them. <laughs> Applique. So I had to cut out the teddy bears and the balloons and the fabric. Exactly. I had to try to match them up exactly and not get glue everywhere. Oh my goodness. Didn't have anything like that. Uh, I didn't know about stabilizers. So I learned that paper towels work in a pinch. So I'm amazed I survived that project, but I did. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm still sewing, so I didn't scare myself off. Um, so anyway, Fusible Web is a super fun product. I'm going to show you one more thing really quick. Uh, let's see. This is heat transfer vinyl. Boy, that stuff just sticks to everything. Okay. Heat transfer vinyl, you want the pretty side up. And I'm going to try my bone ash powder. I've already obviously used this piece quite a bit, so hopefully enough of it will stick. Just put that over. And in theory, the heat transfer vinyl will just stick to those little tiny specks. remember how long this takes. Also my little mini iron isn't super hot but we'll see. We'll see if that worked. It did. It worked almost too well. I put a little bit too much on there but I don't know if you can see but it's nice and glittery and sparkly. That'd be fun for stars or snow or all kinds of fun things. So that is a super fun way to use this bone ash fuse it powder. So um that was by no means conclusive. There's a, it, there's just um, a ton of things that you can do with Fusible Web, and I'm sure there are other brands that I didn't even cover, And uh, but it's just a really fun product to play with, um, and especially for applique. So I hope that you will give it a try. Okay, like I meant to say, that was by no means exhaustive, not conclusive. <laughs> Um, but hopefully that will give you the confidence to try using Fusible Web and um, there's just a ton more things you can do with it. Another one that I uh, usually try to mention is um, my wall hangings. Uh, they get finished um, by stitching the backing to the front and turning it right side out. So there's always a little hole to stitch closed, um, but I often will use this instead. I'll just cut a little piece and press my seam allowances in really well and tuck this in there and iron it down and no hand sewing. So um, that's another another great thing. You can also even hem pants in a pinch. I don't think I could bring myself to do that, but it would work. Um, and for patching, for sure, you can put a put this on the back of a piece of fabric and then put that behind a hole in jeans or whatever and then do some darning stitches over it and it'll be very strong. Um, and And lots and lots more, I'm sure. But it's a very fun product, and I hope that feels like enough to get you started and to try some raw edge applique also. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll check out some of my other videos and some of my kits and patterns.